Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Well, actually, it's the second edition of Cracking the Cryptic today because Mark did his Wordle video today, um, and that was a main video on the channel, which it normally isn't. Um, it came out this morning. <laughs> Now, the reason it normally isn't is that Mark's Wordle videos, he prides himself on trying to do each day's Wordle in less than a minute. Normally, he achieves this. He does it on hard mode as well. And um, unfortunately, yesterday, <laughs> it took him six minutes to do the Wordle. So there's a six minute bonus video and it's very amusing indeed if you have any schadenfreude in your genetic makeup, which I certainly do. Uh, anyway, what have we got for you today in terms of Sudoku? Well, we have this rather beautiful puzzle by none other than Thomas Snyder um, from gmpuzzles.com. Now, Thomas is a friend of mine. He's also one of the very, very smartest people on this planet Earth. Uh, Three-time world Sudoku champion, also a former world puzzle champion, and a genuine, you know, generally good guy. And um, you can see that he's built the today's date. <laughs> into thermometers. So yesterday Mark did a puzzle uh, that, that was thermometers and it did have threes in the corner and Thomas has also managed to put threes in the corner of this thermometer as well so maybe I'll have to use the same intro that I recorded yesterday for Mark's video. Um, now a slightly more somber point is that uh, some of you will know this if you're very connected with the puzzle scene but uh, Thomas has had uh, struggles with his own mental health over the last um, couple of weeks um, and he's on the road to recovery and that's fantastic um, but what I, I don't know whether I'm going to have a link to it by the time this video goes live um, but I know that Thomas is keen to share a, a link for people to donate to um, a mental health charity um, just because he's very key, he's been very, very open about the struggles he's had recently, incredibly open. I think mental health is something that often, especially in Britain, actually, you know, we'd sort of have stiff, stiff upper lip mentality and, you know, don't show your feelings too often. Um, but uh, Thomas has been incredibly brave and basically told everyone, look, I'm having this, I'm, I've been having this trouble and we wish him all the best on his road to recovery. Um, Anyway, that's enough of the somber topic. Let's get on to the happier topic of how to solve Sudoku. Um, and I'll read you the rules of this one. The rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end. And that's it. So if you've never done a thermo before, the way these work is you have to treat the digits a bit like mercury. And mercury rises as the temperature rises. Um, so the digits need to rise as we move along the thermometers. So if this square was a two, this square would have to be higher than two. It doesn't have to be a three, it could be a four, that could be a six, and then we'd have to go seven, eight, nine to finish the thermo. So that would be a legitimate way of finishing that thermo. Now do have a go at this. The way to play is of course to click the link under the video as usual. Now, in terms of difficulty, I do not know how hard this puzzle is. What I will say is that um, the puzzles on gmpuzzles.com, certainly the Sudokus on gmpuzzles.com, don't tend to be as hard as some of the monsters that we get we get to tackle in everyday life here on Cracking the Cryptic. So it ought to be approachable, but please forgive me if it turns out not to be. It's been set by a genuine genius. Right, with that, I get to play. Let's get cracking. And now... Now, of course, if I was Mark, what I would be busily doing at this point is pencil marking the entire grid, which I absolutely refuse to do with thermo puzzles. I try to spot. Mm, I try to spot other things first. Normally, I focus on ones and nines because, of course, especially in a busy grid like this one, for for example, if you look at column five, I can see that the one in column five can only go in one of two places. And that's because if you think about the nature of a thermometer, if we put a one anywhere other than the bulb, we're going to have to get into zeros and negative numbers, which are not valid Sudoku digits. So the one in column five goes in one of those squares. Let's highlight those to make me feel like I'm making progress. Uh, nine, can I can place, I think, in column eight. Look, is that right? Yes, it is. So nine has a similar property. Where can you put nine on a thermometer? only in the very tip. Now this column is completely full of thermometers, but as far as I can see, there's only one tip. So that's a nine. 
Now the only problem with this is, although it's a digit in the grid, it's utterly useless. Oh no, no, maybe it's not. Actually, that can't be a nine now. So nine is a bit restricted in box number two. I'm aligned this nine very unfairly. I'm very sorry, nine. I didn't mean to be nasty to you. Now, nine in the middle box now. Again, we're looking at thermometer tips for the possible nine cells. So I think it's only those two. So nine is in one of three cells at the bottom of column six, not on the end of this thermometer, which presumably slightly restricts what this bulb could be. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it used to be able to be a four and we could have gone four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now it can't be a four. So that's only got the possibilities to be one, two and three. Um, Oh, that, right. Column two is also replete with thermometers, look. And for some reason, I couldn't see that before, but there's only one, there's only one bulb in column two. It's got to be there, so that's a one. Okay, so we've got another digit in the grid. Again, a very useless digit, although maybe it's, maybe it's more useful than I'm imagining it to be. The, the reason I think this is fairly useless is obviously if this had been a high digit it would have restricted the whole of the three thermo but being low it's not really putting much pressure on it. Um, oh god, Maverick's flying past outside. Um, hmm. Okay. Right, so I think we are going to have to think harder about these bulbs and possibly the tips. What, I, what I'll try and resist doing a bit longer is, is, is pencil marking the whole of the thermometers. So that cell, oh, and the logic will be the same. So whatever we work out for this cell will be the same for that cell because it's just a, a six cell thermo, isn't it? So if it's a six cell thermo, it can be as much as four. So one, two, three or four here. Ah, but it can't be four because this can't be nine. There we go. So one, two or three here. What about that one? Well, let's put one, two, three or four in that one first. Uh, now, this one has one, two, three. It's got six higher digits on thermos, on its thermos that emanate from it in the box. So this can't be a four because we go five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we need to put a 10. So that's only one, two, or three. So this might be one, two, threes going on in column five. Uh, not sure, let's, let's check this three. So this, oh no, this three's only, this three's a one, two, three, or four again. It's got five, five digits higher than it on its thermo. Okay, what am I missing here? That So that one's got to be one, two, three, or four. That one we've already put the bulb in. So is it something to do with box five? And this strange sort of rotationally symmetrical thermometer. Yeah, okay, I can see something here. I can't put eight, look, into this T-junction. Because if I do, I'll have to have a higher digit on both sides of it, and that will double nine, row four. And presumably that works symmetrically there, yes. So eight is restricted in this box, in fact, to the same positions as nines, because you can't put eight on thermometers that are more than uh, two cells long, or well, not in the bulb of those thermometers. So there's an eight, nine pair in this box. Um, now... What does that do? So that, ah, okay, so that means that tip now can't be an eight. So eight, yes, okay, so eight in this box must move over to the right-hand side and join its friend the nine. So there's an eight over on the left-hand side of box number one, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means this can no longer be three. So this is, we are slowly whittling away at the options here. The same is true of this. This can't be three because that will force at least an eight into its thermo tip. But these don't align. We can't, we can't, these are not in the syzygy or at least not one that relates to the, the columns of the Sudoku. Hmm. Okay. 
Right, I see. I can see what's happening here. This is really clever. So what Thomas has done is he's offset these twos. And that's actually really important because look at that digit there. That digit is at least two high, well, it's three higher than this digit, at least. So it cannot be a particularly low number. If that was a one, this would be two, three. The minimum this can be is four. But that means if we think about all of the low digits in column five, the ones, twos, and the threes, where can they go? And we've got two of them. The third one can't be here. So it simply must be here. Because if it was here, there would be four ones, twos, and threes in the column. So there is a one, two, three triple in this column. And there, well, this can't be a one because it's not on a thermometer bulb. So, so the one is still in one of the orange cells. Um, okay. So now, yeah, okay. So now we ask where seven goes, don't we, in this column? Because um, we can't put seven here because this would be required to be eight or nine, which it doesn't seem to be able to be. So seven is going to have to go exactly here, which is something, maybe. Two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six. Yeah, we can, I think we can pencil mark this thermometer. Three, four, four, five, five, six. And more than that, now I can use my one, two, three triple in the column to tell me this square here has to be a four because it can't be anything higher than that, or this will be pushed up higher than seven. That's beautiful. So that's four, that's five, that's six. And now in this column, I've got to place five and six, and the thermometer tells me the order, because what we can't do is that, because that would be plain wrong. So the five must go below the six. This square here has got to be a seven, because it can't be an eight or a nine. Now, Yes, yes. Now I can ask by Sudoku and a bit of thermo where seven goes in box five. Now it can't go here, look, because this would be an eight, nine pair and this cell would have no value. So this is ruled out. If we put seven here, this square has to be an eight and we have double nine in the row. So it's not there. So that's a seven, which gives us an eight, nine pair in row, in row four. So the highest value of this cell is now a six, five, four, three. Uh, no, that's no good. Okay, so we've got a properly pencil marked thermometer there. Mark would approve of that, but I don't actually think it's done, done us a tremendous number of favors. Right, let's pencil mark this thermometer then. This has got to be four or three, so that's two or three. Um, Hmm. And, okay. Oh dear. <laughs> Where are we going to look now? Um, no, not there. Nine's in one of three places in box one. I'm like, I, yeah, I'm, pre I'm prepared to pencil mark that. I'm, I'm getting stuck now, so I think I'm going to have to resort to pencil marking. Oh, that can't be a four, look. Would have been better if it couldn't have been a one, but it can't be a four by Sudoku. Uh, six in box five has to be in one of two places here. Yeah, okay, that, yes, that can't be six, can it? Because that's going to push this up again. Because it can't be seven in this square, it will push it up to eight or nine, which is impossible. So six must go below that, which means this square is quite low. It's two, three, or four, or five. Oh, no, it's just five by Sudoku. Don't neglect your Sudoku when doing Sudokus. There is a tip for you. Um, so, we've still got to put four into this box. Yeah, we do. We've got to put four in box five. I don't know where it goes, but it's in one of those two cells. Which means by Sudoku, that's become a four. That's four. Is that really putting pressure on this thermo? I don't think it is. 
I might be wrong. Okay, let's fill some of these in. One, two, three, or four. That clearly can't be one. So this is two, three, or four. Ah. Okay, no, I'm getting... Right, what about that digit then? No, that's seven, eight, or nine. Okay, so my next thought, which is probably going to be the thought of a plonker, is the six sevens and the five fours are looking at these threes and fives here. So maybe there is some um, some exploitation we can do in terms of, am I really going to do this? I think I am. I haven't got any better ideas. So each of these has four options. This is the problem with this. We're going to have to actually properly pencil mark these thermometers to see what's going on. And we should try and do it correctly. There we go. So we can remove six and seven from both of those. Um, and we can remove five and four from both of those. Ah, I can see something there for this square, actually. And its impact on that square. So yeah, this is probably not a silly way to go. Now, so we 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 weren't <laughs> we weren't a Rodney. Now, so what's going on? This is a six or a seven, so this must be higher. So it can't be five anymore. So that's eight. That's nine. That's nice because that gives us an eight nine pair in box number eight. So this is a one two or a three, and we don't know what it is. Six, four, five. No, it's still all for these two cells. I think all the options are still on the table. Nine by Sudoku has to go at the tip of this thermo. It can't go halfway along it. So this is no longer nine. Ah, that's an eight. Okay, Sudoku now, Simon. Sudoku. That's going to help us. Although maybe not enough. Eight is in one of those two cells. This is 9, this is 8, and that's quite interesting. Look, 8's got to be on this, th on this 3 thermometer. Now it can't be here because there are two cells above the 8. So the 8 has to be in this domino, and that resolves the 9 and the 8 in box 8, which is rather nice. Nine has to be exactly here in box number seven because it can't again it can't go on the thermometer before unless it's on the tip of the thermometer. So nine is in exactly one place in box four, which means it's not there at the top of there. And we, how many nines have we got? The answer is loads. I've only got two more nines to find, and they're both up here. How many eights have I got? Not as many. Can we do better with eights? I'm not sure, but I'm tempted to try. Surely this thermometer is going to have the same exact restriction as this one, because it has a five, four, six, seven looking at it in the identical positions, and it's exactly the same shape. This is where I'm going to be proof wrong and look like a plonker again. Two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight. So this is not, yeah, it's going to be, be the same, isn't it? This is five or eight, but when we, we knock the fives and the fours out of here, this has to be at least six or seven, so that's an eight. So we get another eight, nine pair in box number two. We don't quite know about eights in box one, I don't think. The eight is resolved in box six, so we'll take that and see if that helps. A seven by Sudoku can only go in one position in box three, which doesn't resolve this one, but it does resolve that one, so we'll take that. We need ones, twos, threes, and sixes along row eight. I'm going to pencil mark this. Whoopsie. Two, three, or six. One, two, three, or six. <laughs> no. This is why I don't like pencil marking. It just, it makes things very difficult. Seven is almost restricted in box four. It's probably going to go here, I, I think. Seven is a little bit restricted in box one as well. 
probably not enough to be useful. This square's got to be a 1, 2 or a 3, just by Sudoku in box 2. OK, so maybe now is when we're going to have to focus a bit harder on these 3s. When I say the 3s, I mean the 3 thermometers rather than the actual digit number 3. Um, can we see anything else? Sixes? Do we know anything about those? Not really. We've got to somehow get into the, the flanks of this grid. Sevens. Seven is in one of those three positions, but it can be here still. Right. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Where is the natural place to look? This is a one two three so this cell here is at least four but it can't look be higher than five because there's already six seven eight nine in the row so this is four or five only and that logic doesn't apply obviously here because this is not seeing a six seven eight nine quadruple bother okay so that's three or four and this is two or three. I don't think that's good enough, is it? Um, <laughs> I'm struggling here. How do we do this? Uh, can I restrict this one? Or ah, yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. Ah. Yeah. That can't be a six. Because if it's a six, it's pushing this up too high, given we've got six, seven, nine, six, seven, eight, nine quadruple in the bottom row. Good grief. Okay. So this is two or three. This is three or four. And this is four or five. So we're very close, look, to something going on in column two. I just need one other digit. Ah, I've got it. I have got it. Good grief. Yeah. Okay, I just need one more lowish uh, digit on in column two that's forced to be low. And that sees a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple. So that can't be higher than five. So that's got to be two, three. It can't be two, actually, because it's the third cell on the thermometer. This is a three, four, or a five. So look now. I've got a three, four, five triple in this column, and this square's got to be a two, which means that's no longer a two and is forced to be a one. It's beneath it on its bulb. Then I've got a 3-6 pair over here. I've got, I can place one using a bit of thermo logic in this box. It's got to go there. Placing seven where I thought it was going to go in box number four. Uh, this is no longer a one, so that's no longer a two. So six now in this row can't go here because this couldn't be a seven, eight or a nine. So that's six. So that's not six, that's not five, that's not four, that's not three. Ah, it's close. This has got to be two, three, or four. And that's got to be one, two, or three. <laughs> Mark would love this grid. I've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in column eight. So that's got to be six, and that's got to be five, using the power of elimination. Um, now what? Well, I'm tempted to pencil mark column two, actually, because I found this three, four, five situation, haven't we? So we've got three cells left that have to be from six, seven and eight. I and mean, we might find that. Oh, oh God, I, look at, I looked at those then, not realizing that that wasn't in the same row as that. And I thought I'd broken the puzzle. That's a six. That does see seven and eight. Um, that's oh, that's not that's not six. This is seven or eight. So this is eight or nine, and it can't be it can't be nine. So that means this has to be seven. This has to be eight, and that probably is a bit useful. Eight must go here. Eight must go here. Nine must go here. Nine must go here. Yes, this is good. Seven must go here by Sudoku. Um, now what do we look for? I've got to place six in this row and I can do that. It's got to go there. So let me double click the sixes. We've got lots of them. Yeah, that's a six. And that's a six and that's a three. Therefore, we can remove three from these and three from here. 
We've got ones, twos, fours, and fives to place in this column. Now, can we do that? Yeah, that's weird. Where where does three go in row seven? It can only go there, which means the central cell is a two. That's a one. I've got a three, four pair in this column all of a sudden. I could get rid of two from this cell. I can get rid of uh, probably something from somewhere else. Oh, that's got, that's been driven high. Look, this is a three or a four. So given that this has to be three, four, or five, this thermo is forced. Three, five, four. Four here, three here, four here, five here. And we're left with a two. Oh no, hang on. We're left with a two here and a one here. This is going up this is going a bit better all of a sudden, too. <laughs> um, okay, I should be able to finish row four off. That should be a three. Should be able to put a two in there, that looks good. So I've got a four five pair to place in this column, and that seems to give me a four five pair in box one, which means that we can put the three and the two in, which will make that a three by Sudoku. I've got a three because I've got a one two pair in this box. Oh, I've got, no, I've got many better things than that. Look, two, one, one, two. One can be placed in box nine, four can be placed, five can be placed. That ought to be a two. This should be a one and a something. One can go there, that can be a four. That still looks like it's working. That's five, that's four, that's four, that's three, and that's a five. And I reckon that that's the puzzle solved. Let's see, yay. That's beautiful, isn't it? Just beautiful, a beautiful, Sudoku from a beautiful mind. I, I think anybody who's tried that, I hope you enjoyed it, even a scintilla as much as I did. It's just, let's just think about what Thomas has done here. So I think the idea of the start is around limit, noticing that you can't put an eight at these T junctions. That seemed to be important to lock this eight, nine pair in and to notice that column five gets very cluttered as a result. But what I really thought was beautiful was the, these six, seven, eights, and nines, and the way that you could force the fives. So it, yeah, it was the twos, which led on to the fives to be restricted, and then the, the impact that those had on the threes. And then we had this weird restriction in column two, where we had loads of low digits all of a sudden. You can, you can see how cleverly put together this is. Um, well, we can see that and admire it, whilst, from my perspective at least, knowing I couldn't do it myself. So, thanks very much to Thomas. Um, thanks very much for watching, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.